Hello YouTube, this is Frono. Today I'll show you the smelter that I just built on a Hemisphere Survival server. Let's go to free cam. So it's a medium sized smelter at 100 furnaces or 4 times hopper speed. It takes either single items or shaker boxes in the input and outputs everything in shaker boxes. And once again I hit pretty much all of the redstone underground. So it has a very small visible footprint. And it doesn't use any moving minecarts. So the only minecarts in there are for the shaker box unloaders. So I have two inputs. I have an input for fuel, where I put in shaker boxes of blaze rods from my fortress farm. And this lamp will show me if I still have enough fuel. So there's a second chest behind that buffers the shaker boxes. I have an input here where I mainly put in shaker boxes of stuff that I want to smelt. And this is a shaker box splitter, so it will separate the single items from shaker boxes. So single items go directly into one of these lines here. And the items and the fuel each go into a four times speed shaker box unloader. So we will distribute the items over four hopper lines. And each leads into one of these smelting units which uses Rapscarian's equal item distributor to distribute the items evenly at hopper speed over the furnaces. So let's put in maybe some stone to smelt. There we go, shaker box unloader. And you see it's a bit noisy because it fires some droppers that are empty. But that's fine for me. Let's turn off the sound. And there the items go into the furnaces. And are sucked out by hoppers and put into a water stream and go into a six times speed shaker box loader. Now we have 100 furnaces because one hopper line can supply at most 25 furnaces. So we can smelt 25 items in 10 seconds or 2.5 items per second, which is exactly hopper speed. These droppers put in the items in the into the water stream at double hopper speed, so two hopper lines go in there. The loader design is from Acacian and Command Leo and can be found on the Storage Tech Discord. It's a mixed shaker box loader, so it doesn't rely on having only one type of item in the shaker box to break it. And here we have a bit of wiring to break the last shaker box once we're done smelting. If we smelt a lot of items, of course the shaker box loader will break the shaker box if it's full. But once we're done smelting, we want to output the last shaker box to the player. So what we can do is send a signal to the shaker box loader to break the shaker box. And here we just have a pressure plate and once no, no more items come in, we have this pulse extender here slowly running out. And the reason for that is that if we have only one item type, this hopper will be completely full. So this hopper needs a bit over one minute to unload all of the items into the shaker box loader if it's full. So here we have a pulse extender that runs just a bit over one minute and that is refreshed every time new items come in. So if I would put in new items to smelt, they would still go into the shaker box. And after one minute, we finally get a pulse here, a pulse shortener and send a signal to the shaker box loader to break the last box that is somewhere in here. I used two chunk loaders because the furnace array is about 60 blocks wide. This is just the usual chunk loader designed by Dark. And the chunk loaders are connected to the pulse extender. So as long as we have items come in, the chunk loader will run. So here's the monstrosity that I used before I built this matter. And that certainly wasn't a smart one but a quick build to be able to smelt something. And the issue wasn't that it was slow at 24 furnaces, it was, or that it didn't have shaker box handling, which was also a pain in the backside, but it, that it had a ton of open hoppers, which caused a lot of lag. If you run rails over a hopper, then you can't cover it with a composter or similar. So to reduce lag, you'll have to lock the hoppers with redstone which increases the complexity by a lot and makes the build less compact. So also there are three main reasons for me to avoid minecarts. 
first they can collide with entities and stop or just break randomly on unloading, so they are somewhat unreliable. Secondly, I have done plenty of minecart based smelters in the past, so it was time for something new. Of course, this is only a reason for me. And finally, the lag issue. You will have to do something smart to lock all of these hoppers. In my new smelter, all of the hoppers are covered by composters or other containers. Speaking about hoppers, so this is a look at one of the smelting units, of which I have four. And this is the world download. I used four hoppers per furnace, which is just one hopper over the minimum required of three. So you always need a hopper to input the items, the fuel, and to suck out the items. And for the items, of course, I use Rapscallion's item distributor, who works at hopper speed, so we can have the full 25 FIFA furnaces. So why not use the old Elmango equal item distributor? which I have built here? Well, there are two reasons. The first reason is that this does not work at hopper speed, so you can supply maybe 22 or 23 furnaces. And the other reason is that it's in idle state less lag friendly, because we have some open hoppers here, and also these hoppers are only covered by blocks, and this is still slower, a lot slower, than covering them using composters or other containers, surprisingly which I measured in 121.1. And also you need a few more hoppers. You have this additional hopper line instead of droppers distributing the items. If it's running, my, my smelter creates a bit more lag because it updates all of these observers and all of these rails. But in idle state, if it's not smelting, all of the hoppers are covered and nothing is updated. So bottom line, the system here is of course faster to build, but it's more laggy if the smelter's idle. And to be honest, that's the default state. I'm not smelting all the time. Now I could have saved another hopper per furnace by doing something more clever for the fuel. For example, use droppers here. But you know, this is just a very easy system. So basically we get the fuel input from the shulker box unloader and it will slowly fill up all of these hoppers here. It will take about an hour until all of these hoppers are filled and another hour until the upper hoppers are filled. This is a one-time thing, that's not a big issue for me, just something you need to know. Of course the fuel line also works at hopper speed, so if you use some fast burning materials like bamboo or sticks, then the fuel line couldn't keep up. So I wouldn't recommend to do that, or if you do that, you will have to wait after smelting until the fuel is filled up. Okay, and of this one unit, you can mirror it and put in a second unit here on the other side. So this basically gives a 50 furnace unit and you can, of course, rotate this unit in a different way so you can, can, could have it in a right angle. But this was just convenient for me. Also, it's very easy with the shaker box unloader to route the materials there. For the single items, I use hopper speed, so that's fine. I don't think if you put in single items, you need the full speed of the furnace. So what I did here was a very simple shaker box splitter. You see, shaker boxes can't be put into shaker boxes. So if you have a setup like this, and if you have an item, and then you strongly power this dropper, you will weakly power this dropper. So if you have just one pulse, the item will immediately go into the shaker box because this dropper is powered after that one. On the other hand, if you put in a shaker box, the shaker box will end up here. So you can just put hoppers below. And let's put in some mixed items. I have prepared a shaker box for you that you can throw in here. So. All of the items go into the unloader. And after a while we get the first shaker boxes. And once the system is done, it will spit out the last shaker box. So finally, let's have a look at the circuit to break the last shaker box. So this pressure plate activates if any items come in. This will activate this pulse extender. So usually this pulse extender would be built like this and run out after 2.5 seconds. But if we do this and set this comparator here to subtract, then if we have no signal here on the side, this will run forever. And what we have here is an ether clock. And whenever the ether clock fires, we will push 
this composter with level 1 and we will very briefly get a signal here so we will subtract something so let's wait until no more items come in there we go and now whenever this is pushed here we will reduce the signal strength by one and you can configure the time for this by putting more or less items in here so i have maybe a few items too many but better to be on the safe side and the great thing about this pulse extender is that you can configure it to run for a very long time if you fire this clock once every minute then you would get a pulse extender for 15 minutes and you can reset it at any time so whenever new items come in the signal strength will go back up all the way to 15. so the shaker boxes are just spit out into a water stream and are looped back to our output and of course the empty shaker boxes go into another stream and are looped back to this output here for the shaker box loader i added a very simple shaker box crafter and I initialized the crafter with two sharkers of chests and four sharkers of shaker shells. So this can craft about 3000 shaker boxes this way, which should suffice for a very long time in my opinion. Back of the napkin math says over 150 hours of smelting. Of course, if you want, you could also use a shaker box unloader for the shells here and for, uh, a crafter for the chests, whatever but there's no point in overcomplicating things. So let's measure the lag on my computer, which is not very fast. So this is a new super flat world. So the baseline for this world is something like 2.2, 2.3 MSPT. So let's put in the smelter. And we are at 2.8 MSPT. So this smelter takes in empty state, if it's idle, about half of MSPT, which isn't terrible for 400 hoppers could maybe be a bit better. Now, of course, if we put in operation, we get a bit more. So let's just throw in a few shaker boxes. And then we get 5.7 MSPT. So if the smelter is running, we need about three MSPT to run it. So this technology would allow up to 200 furnaces. With these types of shaker box unloaders, with a minecart, we can go up to eight times hopper speed. But in my opinion, 100 furnaces is just right. On one hand, it's very easy to route the items from the shaker box unloaders. So you see, we just go from this one four times unloader, one block to the outside. And the other one for the fuel is right in the middle and goes directly into the fuel lines. And the speed is sufficient to smelt about 20 shaker boxes per hour, which is fast enough for me. So I'm very happy with the smelter. I hope you like it too. Anyway, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Please subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos. And see you next time. Bye bye.